Hello violin and viola players, this video is for Bohemian Folk Song. For my viola playing friends, this is in your Suzuki book. Um, for my violin playing friends, it is not in your Suzuki book, but why let the violas have all the fun? I love this piece, so I made a version for you too. It should be in a separate piece of paper. So the unique thing about Bohemian Folk Song is that it is the first piece that we have that combines our low twos, our F naturals, the ones that go magnetic up against our first finger, um, with G string notes. So um, let's get our low twos warmed up first. So I am on an open D. This is a viola that I have here. So I'm starting on an open D and I'm going to go D, E, F natural. And let's do a couple echo patterns with those. So here I go first, echo after me. Your turn. Let's do that one one more time. Make sure that your first and second finger are touching. One more time. Echo after me. Alright, and now let's go from an F natural to a G. So we have a big stretch between our second finger and our third finger. If you have tapes, your second finger is going to be touching that first finger and then your third finger is going to reach past your F sharp tape all the way up to the regular G tape. So there's quite a big stretch between two and three. So I'm setting down my F natural, smushed right up against my E. My wrist is straight, and then my third finger can just reach out for that G. So I'm going to do that in half notes. Just go F natural, low two, to G, third finger. And then just join me after a few rounds and try to make sure your pitch matches mine. So here I go. G, the third finger, and then go to the F sharp. Bohemian folk song. It gets some people when we get to it, so um, just be aware that you've got that big stretch going between your two and three. All right, I'm going to play the first line of Bohemian folk song, and then I'll break it down. Here I go. <laughs> measures and then two, the same two measures again. So let's just focus on that two measure chunk. Notice the sound I'm playing with. I'm going to do it on an open D. It's a run, pony, jump, pony. But it's a little smoother than normal. I'm just going to cycle that through a few times. Join me to get that sound. I'm on an open D now. And then measure two is completely on your G string, so you're gonna bring that elbow up. Violin players, that's your lowest string, so you gotta go extra super duper high. my bow. This is just my bow now. My left hand's not even involved in this situation yet. getting that elbow up. 
So now I've got my, um, I'm gonna start adding my left hand pitches. In the first measure, we have our low two. <laughs> that same bowing pattern. Let's try that together. This is measure one. Ready, go. One more time for good luck. Ready, go. And now when we're crossing over to our G string, we have to swing our elbows and on our left side, and we need to raise our elbows on our right side to hit those notes accurately. And then you can see our notes just walk down like a scale. Let's try measure two together. Check your wrists, check your elbows. Ready, go. Now let's put measures one and two together. I'll slow it down a little bit. We'll go do, 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 do. Ready, go. And let's do that one more time. You'll have many chances to do it in this song. Ready, go. different and then um, it comes back like we just had so here's the second line and then a familiar two measures first two measures of that second line. Starts on a third finger. Something you could do, because you're only going over for that one note to start, is you could have just your third finger down. That's called independent fingers. This would be a good time to start experimenting with that. So your third finger's down all by itself. And then you can reach up for your G. And then remember I talked about that low two in our warm up? That's where it is. It's a tricky spot in that second measure of the third line. G, remember I'm on a viola violin players, right? G, and then that low two to the first finger. So just make sure you're aiming that so you get the right tune. That nice minor sound. So here, let's do the first two measures of that second line one more time starting from my third finger. You can put it down independently, that means all by itself or not, it's up to you. Just make sure it's on your tape. Ready, go. And then G, make sure you're all the way up there. And let's do that two more times just to make sure our notes are in tune. That's really the biggest challenge of these two measures. Ready, go. And one more. Ready, go. second and third line, the pitches are exactly the same. The last thing I'll talk about are, um, you might see underneath your music, um, and you might not, depending on which edition of the book you have, that there are either some things that look like this, um, they're called a crescendo, or a decrescendo, or there might be the abbreviation C-R-E-S, um, and that would say crescendo or decrescendo, and what that means is you get louder and then softer. So if you have the visual of one of these, 
your sound is small when it is small and your sound gets bigger when it gets bigger. So I'm going to play that third line just demonstrating that a little bit and I can play louder or softer by using more bow or by using more weight into the string. Alright, so I'm going to try that second line. Here I go. One, two, ready, go. Once you nail the notes, really get the notes and the rhythms first, and then you can start adding some expressive stuff. And when you're ready for a run-through, there is one um, on the playlist as well. Good luck. Bye.